Hey guys, so in the last few tutorials we used Blender and learned some introductory tools to make what I called a blocky name. We used the just the standard blocks and edited those to create letters and it taught you a lot about the transform tools, extrude tools, that sort of thing. In your next tutorial we're going to use a similar set of tools and we're going to work with scaling quite a lot and then we're going to start using some of the texturing tools to create a low poly, which means low, not very many polygons, not many, not very many surfaces. A low poly Super Mario style mushroom. So let's jump into the program, and I'm going to step you through how to create this little bit by little bit. So here I am in Blender. I've just opened it up, as you can see. So this is a brand new uh, environment, and the first thing I'm going to do is delete the cube, the camera, and that sunlight. And when we need lights later, when we're rendering our mushroom out. Uh, we'll add those ourselves. So I'm just going to hit X to delete the cube, select the camera, X, delete, light, X, delete. Okay, so I've got an empty environment here, and I'm going to start um, insert, well, I'm going to start by inserting a, a low poly cylinder, and then we're going to start to edit that. So to insert a cylinder, I'm in object mode, you can click on add, or you can do, I believe it's control A, no, it's shift A for add, you can choose mesh cylinder. Now before you click anything else, it's very important that you follow this carefully, because it's the only time that you can change this. I've just inserted it and I haven't clicked anywhere. Down here I get this pop-up, this add cylinder pop-up. If you click on that, it comes up and it lets you change the vertices. Now. The higher you make this, the rounder your cylinder will go, the more polygons it has. So if I zoom right in here, you can see these different shades of grey around the edge of my cylinder. And as I change that, you can see the cylinder will turn all the way down to a triangle. So this is a cylinder with three sides. It's not very round. Four sides would just be a box. And the higher you go, the more edges, or the more, you know, whatever. You get the idea. Now. Because part of this tutorial is to learn texturing, we actually it's going to be a lot easier for you if it has low fa or low poly low if it's a low poly cylinder, if it doesn't have many faces. Now the easiest thing to do here would be to set this to something around about 10. I'm going to go with. If you go higher, it will look better. It will render out smoother. You will have a mushroom that looks more like a mushroom and less less like a boxy oblong shape on the screen. Um, but it's going to make the texturing a lot harder. So I would suggest you stick to 10. Now I'm also, for this tutorial, going to change some of these other parameters um, to... I'm going to set this to 1.5 and I'm going to set this to 3. Now you can change these a number of different ways. You can click in there and type. So I've changed the radius to 1.5 and you, or you could click and drag will let you adjust these. Now, in the, um, a recent update to Blender, these have actually come up with an M, which could mean meters, I don't know. Previously, Blender didn't have any correlation with real-life units, and these units just corresponded to the grid that you can see on the screen here. And so if I set this to 3, it meant that it was the same size as 3 boxes on this grid. And it's possible that Blender have changed that to correlate to a meter, but I don't really know, and that could be wrong. So I wouldn't trust that until you do some Googling or test it. So 10 vertices, 1.5 radius, 3 depth, and we want to change this cap fill type to triangle fan. And now you can just click off in open space to apply that, and here's our cylinder. <clears throat> Now, I want to use a similar set of tools to last time to start editing this. So let's select it and hit tab or come up to your drop down box here and change into edit mode and then unselect all. Now you can see the vertices and the lines all over your cylinder here. And you'll remember from the last tutorials that we had vertex select, edge select, face select, and we've got our transform tools down the side here in move, rotate, and scale. The thing that I that I want to be able to do here is reshape this cylinder to look like a mushroom head without it just being a straight cylinder. So to do that, I'm going to need more rings around the cylinder here. I'm going to need more vertexes that I can work with. Now, there's a tool over here called Loop Cut. If I click on that and just hover in the middle of my cylinder, you get this yellow line. There should be a keyboard shortcut for that, by the way, I believe is... If I just select off that, if I, is it R? It's control, control R, gives you the loop cut and slide, or you can just click it on the menu over here. It's that one there. 
Hover over, you get this yellow line. You can click to select once and it will turn orange. It will turn into a ring of vertexes and lines that's already selected and let you slide this up and down to wherever you'd like to position it. Whatever, put it about there and you just click to apply that. Uh, I also believe, I'm just going to undo that, I believe if I control R to do it again and then click, you can scroll, no, I'll have to figure that one out later. Okay, so loop cut and slide to add that, I'm going to put it towards the top and just click. And now that I've got those, I can unselect all. Now I could, for example, grab the top ring of my cylinder and shrink it so that it comes in to create sort of a tapered in top of a mushroom. To select this, there are a number of different ways that you can do it. If you choose Edge Select, you could just double click on one of those edges and it will select the entire ring. And that's going to be a really useful tool for you throughout this tutorial. Double click an edge <coughs> and it selects the ring. Even if I do it to this one here, it will select the edges that I can't see that are behind this. So if I select those, I'm going to then grab my Scale tool and I'm going to shrink those down by clicking. You'll remember that if you click on these lines, if I click on the green line, it will only scale along that axis. The red line will only scale along that axis. If I choose either of these big white circles that pop up, it will translate along all the axes to, to shrink it down like that. Okay. And so from there, I can unselect all by hitting double, double A, Control R to do another loop cut slide. I can add some of these things in here. And at that point, I'm just going to start manipulating this cylinder by adding a few loops and scaling them, selecting the ring and scaling it in order to create what I think looks like a mushroom. Now, you don't have to make yours look exactly like mine, um, but you could choose to do it sort of similar to mine if you like. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. So I'm going to shrink that down a little bit, and now I'm going to move it up a bit. This one I might scale out a bit more. Remember I'm going for a low poly look here. I don't want to have too many polygons. This one here I'm going to scale out just a tiny bit so that it's not too much smaller than that one. Okay, now the thing is I do want to have one spare at the bottom and I'll show you what we're going to do at the bottom here. So you will actually want to do one quite close towards the bottom down here like this and that's going to become the bottom of your mushroom head if you like. And this bottom one here we actually need to scale it quite a long way in and this is what I'm going to extrude out to become the stem. So once you've created sort of what looks like a bit of a mushroom top with this ring at the bottom, and to do that again, I made sure that I had a loop right at the bottom there. I selected the very bottom ring and scaled it right down. If you wanted to, you could even move this up inside to sort of create like a, you know, so that the mushroom kind of tapers up at the bottom, but that may impact the ease of texturing later. So I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it like that. And now I'm going to choose Face Select, and I'm going to select all of these faces here. Now there's a number of different ways that you can select these, just by the way. Like we've done, you could click one, hold Shift, and click them all. You could hit C for Circle Select, and just kind of quickly draw a circle over those. Or you can also do uh, so Escape to get out of Circle Select. You could also just hold Control, and then... Uh, is it... Uh, it's shift. So if you hold shift, you can kind of drag a rectangle over a bunch of faces to select them. And there are a number of different things you can play with that. There's lasso select, um, which I forget this shortcut for. You can play with all of those. But basically, I like to use circle select or just control and drag a rectangle. So I've selected all those faces. And then just like we were in the blocky name, I'm going to hit escape to get out of circle select mode, hit E for extrude, and I'm going to pull down the stem of my mushroom. Now that I've got this here, I can still go back to Edge Select and select that ring around the top of the mushroom and I can scale it individually if I want to make it bigger or smaller. And then I can do the one at the bottom here as well to sort of make this whatever I like. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger so that I've got this mushroom sort of a shape there. 
Now that'll probably do for a first video. I've shown you how to insert a, a cylinder, change it to low poly to start when you first insert the cylinder. We learned how to use the loop cut and slide tool and then we did a lot of scaling these rings, um, the whole ring scaling the ring up and down to make this cylinder into a bit of a mushroom. And then we'll start working with some more stuff on it in the next video but I think that will do for now. See you in the next video.